Beluadi. There you go. You got That's it, buddy. Okay, cool. <laughs> sure. E-commerce entrepreneur, marketer, and you know, e-commerce is a huge industry right now. A lot of people are are jumping in, and I think it's one of the best entrepreneurial ventures to pursue because you learn so so much, and it's just growing ever since the pandemic. Now, before we talk about how you can start and scale an e-commerce brand, you know, kind of give us like your really short origin story because I know you mentioned it before of how you got into e-commerce in the first place. So how I got into the e-commerce in the first place, I would say I was a dancer, someone who has no clue what e-commerce is, but at some point I needed to understand how can they basically make money without having to go on stage or be in rehearsals all day, every day. So the first, it was the boom of e-commerce, I would say 2015, 16, that, that era with drop shipping becoming a thing and making money while sleeping. It becomes like, that's not possible. You really have to get up and make money. Mm -hmm. But that was basically the first time when I started to learn and actually search on like what's going on, how you can make money online mm -hmm. and basically through e-commerce instead of other niches like crypto, whatever. So the first things first I learned was basically Facebook ads. So something that it was completely technical back then there's so many things changing it's still till today but it, as someone who's coming from music industry or like dance it was just really complicated and there, there was not much knowledge as nowadays to basically understand just how you can launch the first campaign it was just complicated it was like if you want to launch campaign you have to launch a ppe and i'm like you look at it now, like you're not going to get any sales with the PPE campaign. So you can understand the, the revolution of how e-commerce have changed in the past, I would say, six years from now. Mm -hmm. So to to just like just pinpoint on, on something that you said, of, you mean you mean how you can start a business, right? In e-commerce, is that what you said? Yeah, in 2021, more specifically. In 2021. Yeah. yeah. I would say the, the first approach is you got to understand that people are really sick and tired of the same drop shipping products and the same experience they have been receiving for the past four years, five years. Bad shipping time, bad packaging, no customer service, none of all of that. So how can you just start first? Now, finding a product is not an issue anymore because there is so many ways of finding a product or winning product, you can call it. I would say for me, there is no such thing as a winning product. A product that solves a problem is a winning product, but the experience of selling it is what makes it a winner. It's Ooh. not just the product. Okay. People don't buy people don't buy Louis Vuitton because they have a nice bag. They buy it because of the experience and the feeling okay. they get when they buy it. It's a All simple right. bag. Literally, it looks like a Prada or Chanel or, so, or like just Zara, for example, like a backpack from Zara it can look exactly the same as Louis Vuitton, but people will pay so much money for Louis Vuitton simply because of the experience. Mm -hmm. If we can take just that concept and take it to e-commerce, imagine people walking in the mall, they're walking on your store. Yeah. So what's the experience you're gonna provide to these people browsing on your store as that can be as similar or as close to walking in to a Louis Vuitton shop, let's say in Dubai, or one of the biggest malls yeah. in the world. So what? how can you do that? Because at the end of the day, you're selling to a human being simply it's the same people it's not because they're scrolling on you on their phone there is no human touch or human interaction or in experience to make them feel safe first of all to buy from you second of all having the that premium experience of this brand looks really cool and it's it will make me feel cool buying it being a customer of this yeah. brand and third which is the most important part is he gonna solve me a problem or he's just gonna buy it for no reason so if you got these three on lock, definitely you have a winning product. Just okay. forget about what people told you, like this, or that. Just make sure your branding is on point. You have a proper experience that you provide to your customer. It automatically becomes the formula of a winning product. Yeah. It's that simple. I think this is very new to me because from what I hear is like, okay, you have to find a, a winning product. You see the metrics and whatnot. Yes. And of course, I think you are focusing on the actual experience and branding side of things, right? So Correct. You can of course, like, is it important to have those metrics still to see, okay, you have a winning product or just a problem that you think, sorry, not a problem, but a product that you think that can fix a problem, right? And then you create an actual experience. So most of your time is allocated between uh, on making the brand and making it a really cool Correct. experience. Okay. Correct. So I would say just 
the 40% of your business at the beginning has to be like mainly focused on the experience and the branding. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you launch it, it's either going to be a flop or it's going to be a success. It's one of these two. There is no in between. So to prevent that flop from happening, stop doing the same method that we I've been doing it as well. I'm, I'm part of it like the same drop shipping. You find a product today, you launch it the next day. I have done it many, many times. You find it by 4 p.m., the ads is running by midnight. It's that simple. Yeah, you get notifications of sales. Awesome. Yes, we're making money. But how much money are you making? Maximum 15%, 20% of profit. Why don't you just hold on for a bit, work on your branding, work on your experience, have a sick packaging, and then launch it by 30 days. It doesn't matter if it's yeah. going to take you 30 days to get all the packaging ready and the whole experience done, the website looking premium and all of that. Yeah. And instead, you're making 80% or 85% instead of 15 to 20%. It's the same product. You just mm-hmm. worked a little bit longer on making that experience more premium, yeah. more humanized, more personalized to the, to the end consumer instead of just, hey, can you fulfill this order for me? <laughs> That's a big difference mm-hmm. here. So you prefer so, I, so you prefer instead of like having the actual product shipped from the supplier to the customer, you order it in-house and then you make your own packaging around it to make it a more brand experience. This is the thing that I have been teaching for the last, I would say, six months now. It's because now what I have been seeing from my previous clients in the agency who's been doing dropshipping, they wanted to scale. Yeah. They just didn't want to buy inventory. And I understand it's mm-hmm. a cash flow issue, and we yeah. all deal with that. So Instead of that, I had to give them my own suppliers and agent to basically source them the exact same product with the exact packaging they're looking for with the less MOQ. So this way, you basically, I'll just give you an example for one of my clients. Mm -hmm. Their products, the cost per good is $5. Package, ready, everything. So even shipped. So $5, everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So before, it used to cost them $3.5. No branding, nothing, just the product. They have just the box basically with the logo on it. There is no yeah. logo on the product and anything. So now they have just, they increased a little bit more on the price, which is like $2 max. And now they're getting just a hundred units per month if they want to. But the, the problem is they are selling out quickly that now they want more. So just the, the first issue is people are scared of basically putting so much money into inventory and feeling like, oh, we're stuck with this. Understand, I have done it. I failed miserably on one of the beer, the... I don't know if you remember this beard product that's been popping. The, beard I oil? Think, no, beard uh, calm. It's like a hot oh, beard, calm. Yes, yes. There you go. So I had one of these stores and I made probably about like uh, 60,000 in a matter of two weeks. And I'm like, okay, mm. now it's time to scale. And I was like, in two weeks, I wanted to scale. Ordered all the inventory with the logo on it and everything. And then the product flopped. It's simply because I didn't had the contact and the right people to work with in order to just get 5,000 units, I could have got just 100 units and see if I can sell it with the branding. If Mm -hmm. not, that I'm not losing much money. I can always flip it on Amazon and I'm good to go. I'm not losing much money. But the issue with that, I just didn't have much contact. So I I was forced to pay for 5,000 units. And at the end of the day, I had to burn it because I can't sell it anywhere. And it's stuck in China. It was, it was a mess. Yeah. So <laughs> this is what right now, what I would say to anyone who want to start a brand, start with a brand and have a small inventory. So if your product is going to cost you $5, get a hundred unit max, or just get a 50 unit max easily. So you can basically use as say 20 to 50 unit to outreach influencers, get that personalized experience. People mm-hmm. actually holding your product, talking about your product. Then you collect those those footage or those images or all of that to create content out of it. So now you are left with, let's say, 50 units. Easy to sell out. Easy to put that. Oh, sorry, guys, we sold out. It's a cool thing. It's a really cool thing. People see you sold out and all of that. But they had no clue how much unit you have. Yeah. So this is what the Kardashians been doing for years. Let's just be honest. So now you have built a brand and the, an authority that these guys, they sell out quickly. You have collected data. Now you can scale and you can always scale small. You don't have to go and do what I did before. We can buy 5,000. You can always go back to the same supplier and tell them, listen, I would like just a hundred unit this time. As in, again, customize, personalize and all of that. Sell it again, scale next month and so on and so forth. Mm. So that way you don't have, because now it, I'd say it became, e- it become easy to build a brand, then drop ship brand on products from AliExpress or from your agents. So yeah. 
just stick to the personalized part because even this, I would say this uh, pandemic has become like one of the blessings for all of us as, as e-commerce people, because now people wanted to have the same experience when they go to a shop as exactly when they are at home. So they don't have to go and feel that experience. They can just be at home and get the mm-hmm. same experience and sometimes exactly. even less, less, less pricey than what they go to, to the mall. So why don't we take this advantage and just play on our side? Okay, let's just put a bit of two weeks or three weeks, build a brand, just just don't rush. And this is the issue mm-hmm. with, with like beginners. And I've seen it many times. They just want to hear that notification. They just want to hear that. Not- it's annoying. You're going to hear it. You're going to get pissed. You're going to turn it off. Like my phone, I don't have that notification anymore because it's just annoying da, 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 all the time. Mm-hmm. So like, no, I want to hear that. I want to hear that. Just be patient. Take two to three weeks. Work on your branding. Work. Have, get the product delivered to you to see if the actual quality is good. Mm-hmm. And that so when you sell it, you know 100% that the product is going to sell because it fixed yeah. that problem and it has that premium feel. Mm-hmm. Wait, so you're telling me that you can actually go and talk with the supplier to have them package your goods because instead of having them send a generic package to your customer, you can have them send a more detailed packaging that looks more personalized to your Correct. customer. And of course, you have to spend Correct. more money. Okay. And these, Correct. So I guess that does require a lot more work, a lot more logistics, but in the end... Uh, you're creating a, a better experience. And I think you're laying a better foundation for your business as you start to scale up. True. I mean, when you look at it from the dropshipping, if you're coming from dropshipping, it's literally the same thing. Because if you have an agent that you're working with who's fulfilling, let's say, 20 to 30, do- to 30 orders per day, it's the same thing. You get the packaging, package and everything customized. You send it to your agent and your agent fin- finish the same work you've been doing before. It's literally the same thing. You just change it in the SKU now because coming more branded instead of just random numbers from aliexpress and now he has a he, he you're making his life as well much more easier because now he doesn't have to wait for the stock to come from 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 whatever he buys the product from and then ship it to you you already send him 100 units you have 100 units let me know before it finishes so i can get more so now you're efficient you're busy you're actually running a business instead of like oh so when when is the stock when are you gonna have the stock ready no this is my stock buddy this is my customized brand. I know exactly when the stock is running out and when it's not. Yeah. And it's not gonna, it's pretty much gonna cost you less than having just getting drop shipping product with no branding and just expecting that the supplier will have the stock for you. And most of the time we all know that they say yes, we have the stock, but they don't have yeah. the stock. Let's just but, be honest. But that's after you have your your fulfillment center because you know, like you said, you don't want to have 14 plus days of shipping. So you're going to have your fulfillment center somewhere in Europe, somewhere in the U S to no, minimize no, no, no. that. I don't, I you don't know? even have a filmment center in the U S or anywhere. I'm still working in China and I still have Wait, five days shipping. What? Really? So this is the trick. This is the trick. Let me explain it to you. So I will, I will lay it down as if, as if we're just talking to, so I go to, to one of my suppliers. I already have suppliers that, that I work with just for packaging. They're really good at customized packaging, that cute feel for like a, a female niche or like that cool stuff when it comes to like jewelry, whatever. So these guys, I only work with them for the packaging. Get the packaging done in, five, in seven days. Send it to my agent. Go back to the supplier who has the product that I want. Get it from it for, let's say, a dollar or two. So now the total of the, of the whole product is going to cost me $4 with the packaging and, and the product itself. Get it ready in, let's say, it depends on how complicated the product, get it ready for, let's say, 14 days, okay? Send it to my agent. Now my agent has the packaging and the product in the same time. Set up the SQ together. This is the packaging and this is the SQ of the product. So now we just connect the Dizo. Di- what, what's that app again? I always butcher the name of that app. This is the app that connects you with your agent. It's a Chinese app on, Sh- on uh. Shopify. Is it Daiso, is the blue one? Daiso, uh, no, 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 no. It's it's an old one called the. Uh, it's like uh, it's like. Uh, uh, I was gonna say umbrella, but that's American. No, no, no. It's like that, but for Chinese. So they get notification as soon as you get you get a, an order. So they just pack, pack, pick, pack, and ship right away. Mm-hmm. So instead of having my stock travel all the way from China elsewhere to the UK or the US and then get it all the SQ ready and then pick and pack. And it's going to cost me more. I'd yeah. rather keep it in China and have the same exact logistics as I would have in the UK or the US and have five days to seven days maximum depends on the product, on the ship, on the shipping time. And that's it. I'm literally not moving anywhere else. My cost is low and I'm providing a, a, an experience. I've seen that with big brands here in Dubai. And I'm like, 
how come these guys, they have so much money and they still ship from China? Like they could easily rent a warehouse somewhere here in Dubai and then do the two to, two to three days shipping and cash on delivery because cash on delivery is pretty big in here. But they still do it in China. I'm like, so if these guys still doing it, that means I'm dumb if I move my products here. I have to keep it over there because they have more money than I do and they still ship from China. So it makes more sense. And that's when I flipped the switch on my business and I moved everything back in China and I ship everything from there. Okay, wait, let me get this straight though. So when you, have, when you find your product from the, via the, the supplier, you send it to someone else to have the packaging done because they won't package it the way you want, right? I send just one sample. I'll give you an example. If you've seen my brand, Solcom, it's a CBD brand. So the bottle, it was, a, it was a mess, that one. The bottle was made in a different supplier and the packaging was made with a different supplier and the product is manufactured by this difference. So three suppliers, one product. Mm -hmm. So all of them have sent the packaging and, and the bottle to the supplier to see if it's going to fill in, it's not going to leak and all of that. Get, get the quality check, it's not leaking, then start the manufacture. So everything was manufactured in where, wherever they are, the packaging in its place, the oil is in its place, and the bottle is in its place. And then once all's done, they all ship it to my agent. So my agent now has everything together, the packaging, the bottle, and the oil all together packaged. Okay. So there's okay? Like a, and then he's just going to ship. Yeah. yeah. But okay. it's when you have the system in place, you, it's become very smooth. I know the beginning was hard for me, but now I know exactly. Contact the packaging. Here is the the. For, the P, P, the Photoshop uh, demo, this is the, how the box should look like. This is how the, the color, stop manufacturing. The other guy has the product. Here is the logo, put it on the, on the product and send them to the Asians. I put them yeah. all together in one group chat. They talk Chinese, I don't care, uh -huh. just get it done. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so do you have an idea of like what packaging works? Because I know depending on what product you're going to sell, uh, you're going to use different packaging and whatnot. But mm. from, the, from your experience, from the products and brands that you've worked on, do you have like a formula or a criteria for your packaging? I would say colors first. First, starting with the colors, understand the meaning of each color based on your niche. So you wanna you wanna know which colors goes with your niche first, and then create something that's close to it. For example, the yoga niche, many people use purple because mm -hmm. it has that zen, and then go all of that. So you don't wanna go with purple. You wanna go like light purple, something cool. So, so, and then you create your, I would say, palettes, we call it. So it's like four to five colors palette of your branding that's going to go on your websites and branding kits. So branding kits, I would say, when it comes to packaging, to answer your question, there is something called and packaging therapy, if you heard about it. No. Nah, it's, it's, it's a big thing now, people having that therapy of and packaging their products. Oh. Okay. It become a thing, especially during the pandemic. It's weird, I know. And I, when I when I heard about it, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> but it is it is a thing. People really, really enjoy the packaging more than the product. So then when I started to like go a little bit crazy with packaging, instead of just putting one box, I will add another one. So you open the first one, you find an, a book that tells you more about the product and all of that. Then you open the second box, then you find the product and you find another discount code that can get you back to the website so you can purchase more. So it's just more of like, because yeah. a story of unpackaging, if it's just one story, people is going to get like, oh, okay, whatever, this is boring. But if it's like five stories, okay, look what I received. Open one, then open the second one. People get excited. I'm like, oh, what's going on in that product? What's, what's this brand? It's nothing. You just added one box, <laughs> but it makes people feel like this is cool because when you go, go back to Louis Vuitton example, when you buy from them, the box has an, like an exciting uh, opening. You open it from the bottom, turn it all the way up, slide the thing in, up, then you got the bag. You could have just put it in one bag and I'm good to go. <laughs> no, you want to give me all that hassle. But at the end of the day, if I put it on my story, People are like, oh shit, that looks cool. Oh, sorry, I didn't know it's crazy. Now you can, yeah, you can. Okay, cool. So <laughs> it's like, oh, that's cool. Look at this. So this is what I'm trying to do. I want to replicate the same experience those premium brands that have been around for years and years before I was even born, turn it into e-commerce now. Because this is the era of e-commerce. And if we don't capitalize on giving the same exact or even more experience that people used to have when they go to the physical store, then we're still going to be that, mm, I'm not sure if this site is 
actually legit or they're just going to take my money and never give me a refund. So I'm just, mm-hmm. you know what? L- let me stop that idea because based on what you see on your screen, you're 100% sure I'm going to deliver an experience instead of just the product. Yeah. I like so that. that's where, where the trick is happening now. Okay, but speed. what's the what's the Tell new me. trick? So people always say speed is the game in drop shipping. Find a winning product, try to sell it, then scale it. But no, you're focusing, you're taking more of your time on the branding experience. However, people listening to this, people watching this might be like, yo, I want to validate the product as soon as possible so then I, so then I can start scaling. And the way you do that is just to get a minimum order quantity. I get one. I get one. one. To, to just validate the quality, just get one. Just like this, okay. the way we used to do drop shipping when we get it from Amazon, for example, or from AliExpress. I used to do Amazon sometimes because I wanted to get the product quickly so I can make my own videos. But now I'm building a brand. I'm forcing people to like my product. Yeah. It's, I'm, it's not up to the customer to like me. It's up to me to make the customer like me, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Because yeah. if I give you an experience, you're going to like me. If I give you a shit experience, regardless of the product, you're going to hate me. I was like, man, the product is shit. Even though it's good, it really works for them. But he will talk shit about you. It's simply yeah. because he didn't give them that experience. So I'd rather spend, I say, two to three weeks building that experience because it, you do it one time and one time only. You're not going to do it every month. You do it one time. So you're done with it. Then you start selling. And then scaling that, it becomes so much easy. Because I'll give you just an example. My, one of my clients in the agency, they had a really cool product and the experience is cool. But the issue is the packaging was bad. The packaging was really, really bad. And the price is high. And I'm like, you can't charge people $1,000 for this. It's called a veggie pot if you heard about it. It's, uh, you can basically plant your own vegetables at home. Mm. And they reached out to me at the beginning of the pandemic where people were like rushing to, to, the, to the stores, getting groceries and all of that. And then we switched the, the trick on like, you can actually plant your own vegetables at home. So you don't have to be somewhere where people has COVID in his hand and touch you. You know what I mean? Like we just reward the whole marketing part of it where you can actually get your groceries from your backyard. Mm-hmm. But the issue is the product is expensive. Good. Yes. But you don't have any experience to let people understand that this product is the deal for you instead of just like, ah, oh, it's just too expensive. I'm not going to put so much money on this. So as soon as we changed the packaging, made it more personalized and more cute, because basically who buy that product was women. So the packaging was very mainly, very like outdoor kind of niche, like normal, normal hard, hard box. Yeah. I'm like, dude, nobody's going to like that. Like when they receive, it's a woman who opens it and she want to take a story of it. So they didn't have that idea. So as soon as we switched it, in two months, the whole business scaled automatically. Yeah. Simply because people were st- taking stories of when they received it. Yeah. Wait, let's run it back for a second. So you said that after two months, it will start it started to sell. But do you have a No, after two months, you can scale, I said. Oh, you can scale. Okay, okay. No, you can scale. Now, what do you do in terms of like, okay, you have a nice product. You have the nice packaging, branding, everything. And of course, you put it on your website. Uh, you can't expect it to sell right away. So do you leverage no. do you leverage influencer marketing to show the packaging, show how cool it is to unbox it and whatnot, and then you do that to multiple influencers and grow your your Instagram, for example. Because when I think about branding, I don't think about just the packaging and the product, but I think about okay, what's your content on social media as well? Correct. A huge aspect. Correct. That's that's spot on. So this is how I do it. This is a one on one launch. How I do it. Got the product. It's ready, ready to sell. I send at least 100 units to all these micro-influencers. Micro-influencers is between 5,000 to 10,000 followers. These people, they're not going to charge me anything. They just want free gifts. Awesome. You want free gifts? I'll send it to you. You're going to give me three videos, one in packaging and one testing the product and one how it makes you feel after trying the product. So three contents. So they send it to me. They post it if they want, if they don't want to. It's not an issue for me, to be honest with you. For me, I need to get that content to leverage Facebook ads. So now I have the whole, the three funnels. I have top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel content. All right. So now after a hundred, a hundred people send me the same content and, and basically they, they have to reword what I say. So I send them a script of what you can say about the packaging, but I told, I told them always try to reword everything. So I don't want to have the same people saying the same, same thing. So now I have a hundred video from packaging 100 video of uh, how they feel about it 
and a hundred video how it tastes or how it looks or how it makes them feel. Now the funnel is ready. I don't have to do much. Facebook will work for me. I know people like, oh, you have to take Facebook ads. Yes, I struggled with Facebook ads for years. But nowadays, Facebook ads want you to give me good content and original content in order for me to give you good reach, good CTR, good cost per click, and low as low as low as cost per purchase. And it's simple. It's, it's a business at the end. That's just, this is the issue I found all the time. People really don't want to do that first one month of hard work. And after that, you can chill. Yeah, relax. Go to Bali, sleep in Bahamas, whatever you're going to do. <laughs> just please do me a favor. Focus on that 30 days and you're going to be fine. I promise you. Yeah. So now I'm launching the ads. Top of the funnel, I'm just explaining the fact how they feel about the product. That's it. And the story behind the product. That's it. I'm not pushing any sales. Yeah, there is a call to action there, but I'm not pushing for any sales. Just the story. Long copy all the time just to get people like understand exactly what's going on with this product, what it is. They go to the, to the, lend, to, to the product page, okay? Now I'm building my, my middle of the funnel. So lookalike audiences for page views, uh, initiate checkout, add to cart and all of that. So those are the middle of the funnel. Middle of the funnel, I'm always getting them the testimonials people talking about the product. Oh my God, I received this and nah, 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 all of that. So imagine how many content they see from different faces every day getting hit by multiple faces saying the same thing about the product. They're convinced at this point. At this point, we're getting so many purchases. But bottom of the funnel is just straight up the image of the product telling people, come on, you got to purchase this now. Yeah. You've been through the funnel for so long. I need to get you off this funnel. Purchase so I can get you off the retargeting. So, and it's, this strategy has been working for the past, I would say a year now, since, like since the pandemic. Okay. So, yeah. So let's talk about the second phase where you now, you have the product and then now you, you want to send it to the influencers and people might be like, okay, you send it to these influencers, micro influencers, and you send them the product. And this is like a debate where people think like, okay, you send them the product and you, ex you should expect nothing in return, but if they do like the product. Like do you, when you message these influencers, are you like, okay, I'm going to send you a free product. And if you do like it, here are the instructions to follow. If you no, 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 no. We always agree from the beginning. I'm sending you this product in exchange for A, B, C. You cannot okay. just send the product and be like, okay, if you like it, no. Girl, you like it or not, I don't care. You're going to send me that content. <laughs> so some people, they don't like the, the, pro the, the okay. product, but they are forced to send it because that's the, that's the contract because we send them a contract to sign it. Even though there is no payments, you're going to deliver the deliverables because it costs us money to send you the product. Okay. That's the thing that, like, let, let me know if I'm wrong here. That's the thing that mm. kind of scares me or worries me because a lot of brands, they want to work with influencers and develop a relationship. Like, you know what? I'm going to send you free products. If you like it, cool. I still want to be part of your life because I think that your lifestyle fits my brand, right? And if they send the content, wonderful. If not, no hard feelings. But you are, like, more, I guess, on top of it. Exactly. Okay. The issue with that is I think people are sending products to like micro influencers. And obviously these people get in so many DMs, so many emails, they probably have a manager. So I'm like, so what am I getting out of this product? This is how they look at it because they're also yeah. business people. What am I getting out of it? Is there any money there? No. So I don't need it. And if you even you send it, they're not going to open it. They're just going to leave it there. You lost yeah. your product and they didn't deliver at the end of the day. So that's why I always go after the micro ones. Like I would call them nano if you want, like small ones. These people, they're so happy when you reach out to them. Oh my God, I'm getting brand deals now. It's, <laughs> it's not a brand deal, but it's still like it's a yeah. collaboration. Like you get in feature in our page. There might be some followers from our page will look at you and they like you and they follow you. Things like that. There is an ROI there. It's not like, yeah. it's not always money. For me, the ROI is the content. Mm -hmm. For them, the ROI is the exposure. That's it. As True. clear as simple. <laughs> so they like don't I don't expect them to like push the brand and all of that. But if they really like it and they actually wanted to purchase it, I give them a discount and also give them an affiliate. I'm like, listen, you've been loyal to the brand from the beginning. Here is an affiliate link. If you promote it, then you get a cash for it. And okay. for me, that's building real relationship and yeah. loyalty with these people. Because at the end of the day, they are customers to my brand. But they happen to have a couple of following that they might as well buy from me. So why not reward them and get them with, on my side instead of just keep them in front of me, just dealing with them like a, a B2B kind of relationship. Now it becomes yeah. more like partners kind of 
You know what yeah, I mean? I understand it. Maybe it's just my DNA because to be honest with you, I don't like this, the aspect of trying to have someone buy something from me. And I guess very straight to the point, and you are creating an incentive for them via the product sure. and of course discount codes and being an affiliate and whatnot. So I guess at the end of the day, you do have to be like a businessman, businesswoman to make that relationship happen and get that Correct. Content. Now, Correct. In, in terms of the content itself, do they send you the raw footage as well? Because I know on, on Instagram, you can have the little titles and emojis and whatnot. Or do you just look for the raw files? I always look for the raw because I have the, the guy who takes care of all the content and making the videos and stuff. So I always ask for the raw content. So I give them a phone number. If they have an iPhone, they can always iMessage it to me because that way the quality stays the same. And if they don't, I always ask them for WeTransfer. Some people, they don't know what we transfer, So I have always filmed a real, uh, uh, what's called, not real, uh a video IGTV? screenshot oh, I, no 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 just 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 screen a screen video on my laptop explains oh, them how they can drag and drop the video into we transfer click here get the link send me the link it's a short okay. quick video so that way they understand because some people they, they're not as tacky as as yeah, us yeah. so it's easy to send them that video this is how to use it put, put the okay. content here and then that's it that way i receive in a high quality and then we create high quality contents okay yes. so so when they make I guess some stories, you know, the thing is that when they make the stories, the actual footage is in Instagram, but I think it can be saved within the pre-roll. Saved without the, yeah, saved okay. without, yeah. Okay. So what, what I usually do is I always ask for them to send me the content before they post it. That mm -hmm. way, if she says something wrong, then I can always mention it and then they can reshot it. Yeah, that makes sense. So that, now, yeah. I feel that, okay, as an influencer, micro-influencer, does it matter how expensive or how valuable the product is? Because if it's a very small, like, I don't know, let's just say candy, right? Five bucks and there's not much, right? But it looks cool. And yeah. you have all these steps to do to help you out get the brand exposure, is it worth it? Like, do you think it's best to do it with the product that's more expensive? So you're talking about high ticket products? Yes. Okay, so high ticket products, you always want, this is the thing. Starting a high, high ticket product uh, business, you always have to look at your cost first. You always have to calculate. So for example, if your high ticket product costs you $40 and then you, you're going to send it to her, it's, that's, that's your cost, $40. And you're yeah. selling it, I'll say for $300 to $400. First, you got to calculate your cost of, let's say you, if you put that $40 on a PPE campaign, like a brand awareness or post engagement video, how much branding is going to get you compared to how much branding is going to get you this person utilizing her face, her voice, and experiencing the product. And here we go back to the point of people really want to buy products based on the human interaction and how humanized the brand is. Mm -hmm. So if I'm having, let's say, a bottle of my product circling around and the benefits of the product and all of that, like, yeah, buddy, good, awesome. But if I, if I have a nano influencer saying, oh, I'm using this CBD oil, it makes me feel so calm. I go to bed quickly. I don't have anxiety anymore and all of that. What think will be more like drive more traffic and more brand awareness? Is it the video of the bottle of the, or the lady that she's talking about the product? The lady, obviously. There you go. So for me, I don't mind. Yeah, it's for me, the ROI is higher than that $40 yeah. always. Okay. And it's... It's always, this is the mentality that I would like to change for upcoming dropshippers or upcoming uh, e-commerce. Mm -hmm. Try not to feel like you need to get that notification as soon as possible. Just slow down, get your packaging ready, get your branding ready, and get people to really test your product and give you that honest opinion. Mm -hmm. Because this is a long-term journey. It's not like a store that you're going to launch today and you're going to shut it down in the next three months. Because you yeah. can easily scale it the next the next two months so after two months you can easily scale it because mm -hmm. you already passed that 50 percent of when we do drop shipping you have to build that uh, brand awareness and all of that you get a lot of bad reviews on your website we got you can edit it and all of that we have done all of that yeah but would you like to cut all this kind of work and heavy lifting and get straight to the winning simply by delivering a good product to people who are going to talk good about it and then utilize that footage, that content to run ads. And the ads become so cheap. Like so many times we utilize like old content, like that has just the image or like the benefits of the product with 
a, a video or an image of the person holding the product with the benefits and how they feel. You always get the one with the human face or someone talking, holding the product, get higher ROAS compared to the one that is just like high quality 3D, uh, all of that fancy graphics. People really want to feel like they're talking to someone, like you and I now. We're having a cool conversation. I'm enjoying it and all of that. But when I see a picture of you and I'm just talking to a picture, I'm like, what's going on with me? Am I, I, am I lost or something? Mm-hmm. This is how people feel all the time. They don't want to say it to you, but subconsciously, this is how they feel when like scrolling through your website or scrolling through your social media. They need to see people talking about you. If you're talking about it as the owner, I'm like, oh, well, he's just the owner, obviously talking about his brand. Obviously, different faces, different ethnicities, different uh, accents. I'm like, oh, this is worldwide. This is not in the US only. This is not in Australia only. This is, mm-hmm. you can hear accents from different countries. So people are really enjoying this product everywhere. I should give it a try. So now you pass that phase of like people questioning you about how good you are. They already purchased from you. Now your product is good because you know it and it fixes that exact problem. Now we move into the second part, becoming an advocate for the brand. Because now your product is being used in a good, in a good way. Now they're going to talk about it. Easy, word of mouth. They, everybody want to brag about what they have. Everyone. Or well, I bought this from this brand. It helps me. Everybody want to feel cool about owning something. Mm-hmm. So the hard part is the first acquisition. That's the hard part. As soon as you get it, like you get them through the door and they purchase, now it becomes a relationship. Before, when we used to do dropshipping, it was easy to get through that phase because we can put so many footage from YouTube, so many crazy graphics to get the sale. But as soon as they get the product, they hate us and they hammer us with reviews and give me my refund and all of that. So yeah. let's just switch it, man. Just, just work on, as I said at the beginning, give a good, good branding and good experience because as soon as they purchase from you, they want more. Yeah. They literally want more from you. So that's where the extra like money comes in from not having to spend so much money on ads because people really like your product and if it's like something that it's monthly being purchased you can put a subscription model for it and then run it on a side where people can just basically pay less and then having having it delivered every month there's so many Mm -hmm. ways to basically scale your brand if you believe that it fixes a solid problem yeah now in terms of the influencers uh what's the best way to find them and they do use tools like you go on google you type up like these influencer tools to find ones in your niche or do you just go on like instagram go on hashtags and just find them one by one manually that's the thing i i use i use i usually use the instagram for for like uh uh, like uh, influencer research but lately for the past i say five to six months i have been shifting from instagram to youtube because really? I feel, yes, the problem with with Instagram, yes, there is good ROAS and there is all of that and traffic, but it's just that 24 hours. Because if I need her, I need to pay her again. Mm. So what I found on YouTube, especially on a niche that I, I can mention, it, ASMR niche of whatever, whatever, you guys don't go after this niche, please. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the ASMR niche is something that people consume every night. It's There is an issue of people that can't sleep and they need to watch this ASMR videos to fall asleep and feel calm and relaxed. So I, I went out to this niche and the, the good thing is my ad is being watched every night instead of on 24 hours. So I'm getting sales from these small YouTubers who has 10, 10K subscribers who I paid already, I'd say around $200 and still making me money till today. So the beauty of YouTube is people always come back to the same content to rewatch it again. So when they rewatch the content, my ad is already there because I'm sponsoring the whole video. So this is the thing I feel like people have to look into instead of just focusing on one platform, which is Instagram and Instagram influencers. And, and they are, they're, they're a little bit hyped up. They are, they're a bit gassed up, all of them. And this is the issue we always deal with. You get this upcoming influencers and they're like, no, I charge a thousand dollars. Like, come on, let's talk numbers. You don't have that much engagement anyway. So chill out. But with YouTubers, they still humble. And I really, really like working with YouTubers because they just at home. They they showing whatever they have and they just they're not trying to be somebody. The other ones are, I'm in here. I'm eating this restaurant. I'm working out with this guy. La, 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 la. They're guessing up their whole life every day. And we reach out to them 
you better be ready to handle all of that gas. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the issue. But if you really want to stick with, influ- with the Instagram influencers, go for it. Still works. But the smartest way is to work with someone who has content that repeatedly watched. That way you always get revenue. If you get just like $100 out of that video every day and you pay $200, that's a lot of ROI. Because you just yeah. you, you already got your money back in two days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. And I, I've heard about YouTube marketing and whatnot, YouTube influencers, but not to this extent. And that makes a lot of sense because I think when you watch a YouTuber, more specifically an influencer, you're really gravitated to that one person. You know what there I mean? There you go. There you go. And like you said, Instagram is all about a highlight reel, whereas YouTube is a lot more transparent. And because, sure. you know, once they share your product, like this guy's legit, this girl's legit, I trust him or her. So it's a different story that's right true. there. That's true. Because especially with the, with the Instagram influencers, then sometimes you, if you don't pay extra, they will have another ad right after your ad. And that's really annoying. Like you say, she's talking about my product and the next door she's talking about another product. Now people are confused. So which one I'm going to buy, even though they're completely different niches. But it's just because now I'm up against another ad and I have to just prove to people that my product is better than the other one. So you, please mm-hmm. guys purchase for me. It's annoying. I don't want to deal with that. I want to yeah. just dedicate a video just about my brand being used for a minimum of 10 minutes. So mm-hmm. 10 minutes, she's doing whatever she's doing in her video. And she keeps including my product in the video multiple times. Yeah. So that way people really get that subconscious knowledge about my brand, even though if they don't want it today, tomorrow, maybe they mm, skeptical about it. The next day I'm like, okay, now I'm sold about this. I'm going to purchase mm-hmm. it. You cannot have that on Instagram because story apps is 24 hours and that's it. Done. Yeah. No one knows you anymore. And you mentioned that you need at least 100 influencers to really get that content and start creating your Facebook ads, right? You can, you can start with 30. It just depends okay. on how much you budget you have. Okay. I mean, the more, the bigger you go, the better. So 100 influencers, different nationalities, different uh, accents. It shows that the brand is massive. It's not just... and. One thing, again, when you're launching ads, for example, I'm launching ads in France, I'm using French influencers who speaks French. Hmm. So that way, I don't have to basically put a subtitle on all of that because I dealt with that before. And since I come from Morocco and I speak French and French people don't really like to learn a new language. With all my respect to French people, I know you, I grew up with you. <laughs> so the thing is you want to give them what they know. So like, you know what, for me to take your money, I'm going to play with your game. So I will use influencers who speak the same language as you. That way I can get you to trust my brand because I know you're going to like it. I just know you're freaking arrogant that you don't want to learn English, but it's okay. I'm using an influencer from France to sell you my product. And that way I'll be happy and then yeah. we'll be good friends. <laughs> Wait, can I ask you, like, I think this is an interesting question. You know, say, yeah. you have, say you have a product and it's already selling stuff, right? And you have your metrics, your analysis, and you say, you know what? For some reason in Spain, for some reason in France, this product is selling a lot. And I guess to really double down on that is to look at these implosions in Spain, in France, and create content that's contextual to them. That's the holy grail. Wow, (laughs) really? That's the holy grail. Easy, easy. Because that's exactly how I found out the French country was making me more money. It's simply through ads manager. Go buy locations, buy age, and see where where the purchases are coming from. France. Okay, now let's use some influencers from there. And Next thing you know, just scaled like crazy. And I had to create campaigns simply for friends. So I had to get them off that European campaign and just put campaigns simply for friends, people. Yeah. That way I can just leverage more on that. Damn. So you're really flipping this whole model because like from time to time again, I hear dropshipping, this final wedding product, test, 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 doesn't work, repeat it. And I feel like what you're doing, it does take a while. It's a lot more work logistics within that first month or two, right? But yeah, I just think first that once, month, I would say. I, I just think that once you get it off, you can really start building from there because you already have a really strong foundation. You know what I mean? There you go. There you go. I think, yeah. look, I have spent so much money buying courses, going to seminars, one-on-one coaching, all of that. And I've failed miserably, bro. You have no idea. I, I spent so much money that I gained nothing. And simply because of this, this whole approach of like, find a product that's selling and just sell it. Yes. Awesome. What's next? They got the product. They're not going to come back. Of course. Yes. It's literally the same concept. You just reword it to me. 
give me something that it's gonna like consistently make me money instead of just that first chin chin yeah. i don't want that just one time i want it multiple times from the same person yeah. and to have that i need to build a brand so mm-hmm. i'd rather spend that first 30 days get everything ready and like you can you can do that if you leave i mean if you live in china obviously but if you live somewhere cl- close to china you don't have long shipping you can always see your product in the first week especially for example the oil is a complicated product you have to see the taste the milligrams and do the lab tests all of that but if you're selling jewelry jewelry you really don't need all of that you can build a brand in a week simply because the jewelry is already they're just going to put a logo inside the, the ring or whatever necklace you have it's going to take them two days to three days maximum now you have your product ready packaging is going to take three to four days now a whole week you have the packaging and the product ready you don't have to taste it it's a jewelry it's, yeah. it has no taste it has nothing so i'm giving you an example 30 days if you have a complicated product that requires testing lab tests all of that but if you have something that is just jewelry clothing clothing maybe sizing because chinese sizing is different but you can always send your size. And this is one of my clients are doing. We send their own sizes ready. Like, like for example, hoodie is L, large or M. We have them here and we send them to them. This is the exact measurements we want for large and medium. Mm-hmm. Do not do your measurements. Stick to this measurement. Yeah. And, and that's it. Next week, stock is ready with the exact measurements. I think it's just thinking ahead of, of, of yourself and understanding what can I do to speed up the process. Yeah, and it is so many ways. Like my way is, could be old now. Some people they have a different way. It's just how you can speed up your process and not rely on like, okay, this is what people do. This is what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good to not reinvent the wheel, but can you optimize it? Yes, do it. Okay. If you can't optimize, then you can chill. And yeah. for us now, there is a room for optimization simply because of the pandemic. This pandemic changed the whole game for dropshippers. Show me one person now who's making six figures a month just drop shipping random products. People understand now. They really understand what's going on. If it's, re- if it's been delivered more than seven days and the packaging is not branded, they're not going to purchase from you again. But if the product has been delivered in less than seven days and it has an experience when, when it lands, when it comes to them and all of that, they're going to talk about you and they're going to purchase from you more. Yeah. Now, I feel that we went through you know, three steps. Phase one is finding a product that solves a, uh, a problem you know, packaging it. And then second phase is finding influencers. Third phase is, you know, Facebook ads and advertising. This has to be, yeah. Now, logistically, what is the hardest thing? Because I know we zoomed through these three phases, but mm. it, it, from my perspective, it can sound very easy, but I know there's so many nuances, so many things that you have to learn. But what is the biggest hurdle in your opinion, in your experience from, and your students as well? Like, what's the biggest hurdle? In, in when it comes to logistics? Yeah. I would say simply finding the right Asian who has multiple lanes instead of just like uh, e-packets or yarn express on some of these famous ones that most people use always find an agent that has multiple connections with these lanes that way you don't have to be stuck with like for example yarn, yarn express increase the prices of the shipping or e-packet and then or also increase the, the the time delay then you literally have the same experience as the competition why don't you just find someone who has multiple lanes that way if they shut down you can use another lane or even increase a little bit of the money that way you can have more like faster shipping time and have an experience because again we go back to the same point if i deliver my products as quick as possible with an experience and my competition selling the same product with no experience and have the sh- same sh- sh- shipping time our ads will show up to the same person let's be honest Okay, but if I purchase from both of you, who I'm going to come back to? That's the question you can ask yourself all the time. I'm going to go back to the one who provided me with the experience Mm -hmm. and fast shipping. So always think that you're not the first one or the last one who's selling that product and know that so many people are in the same niche as you are. And what can you do to basically step on this competition and be the one who always people want to go to and want to purchase from? And you don't have to be a billion dollar company or a million dollar company to do that. It's simple nowadays. Just get your branding ready, get your experience ready and get a reliable agent that you can trust who will deliver by the time instead of just telling you it's shipped, but it's not shipped. Yeah, exactly. I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of logistics, there's a lot of work. And like I said, again, 
people want, are looking for the fast solution, but I think that even though this takes a while, it takes longer than usual, uh, you're setting yourself for success and Absolutely. scale a lot more faster. So Absolutely. Uh, Seth, you mentioned that you had, you know, your students. So if people want to work with you, uh, be mentored by you, uh, possibly, where can they, you know, learn about this method of e-commerce? I have, I have a course, a very, very, can we call it cheap or can we call it accessible? Because I feel like I have spent so much money on courses that I haven't seen much value. Yes, there is like a tin, like a tiny part of each one. So I had mm-hmm. to collect each one. Like for example, this course has a good strategy of Facebook. Uh, this course has a good strategy of how you can put a dashboard, how you can understand the dashboard of Facebook. I'm like, okay, I didn't know this can help. And then another <laughs> course shows how you can write a copy. Good. I need to learn how to write copy. Another course shows how you can write email copies and how you can schedule them. And I felt like people need to have everything in one place instead of like paying here, paying here, paying here, paying here. Mm -hmm. That's that's exactly what happened with this course. And that's why I've seen so many results with it because people, they didn't have to pay so much that way they have cash flow to start. I don't want to sell up a course to people and then they just sit down. And I hate when people say, yeah, invest in yourself first. But what if that person doesn't have that much money, buddy? Are they going to spend that, I don't know, like $300 on your course and then sit there with no cash flow to start a business? Yeah, good mm-hmm. to have knowledge. Awesome. But give people access at least for a low barrier. And then when they can scale, you can charge them later. They, all, they mm-hmm. can always come back to you because you provide them with value. Back to the yeah. same point we spoke about. <laughs> experience. Give people a good experience. They will come back to you regardless. So mm-hmm. if you want to find me, it's your ecom.